Right then guys, how are we doing? So today, following on from the video I put up the other day with the custom scenery, uh, the response to the commentary was quite good. So I thought we're going to have a little go at doing that again for one of the time lapse videos. I won't do this for every video because sometimes it's just not necessary. Like the last one, all I put in was a couple of flat rides and, you know, restaurant building. For this, because we're building a coaster, I thought I'd try and talk a bit about it, show you what I've done, that sort of thing. Okay, so it's the last coaster in the park. What we're building here is a B&M Hyper Coaster. Obviously, these are quite popular in Europe. Um, you've got Silver Star, um, Shambhala, Port Ventura, which is actually the only one I've ridden in Europe. Um, there's a few others. Can't think of them off the top of my head. Basically, I'm not the best at building these. The layout's pretty standard, it's just airtime hills and a turnaround section. As you can see I struggled a bit trying to get some of the profiling correct on the drops and on the airtime hills, that sort of thing. But in the end I think we get a pretty decent layout here. Now these B&M ones are the more modern type of hypercoaster. Obviously you've got the, the older sort like the, the big one at Blackpool and these ones I can only really fr from experience go from the reference of Shambhala I think it's built 2012 but they tend to be very smooth very fast rely on sort of airtime being the main focus of the ride in general they're probably one of my favorite types of coaster to ride as well I'm actually trying to think of more examples now, even having a look on Google. I can only think of the two at the top of my head. I want to say Hyperion because that's a similar ride in it, but I'm pretty sure that's made by Intamin. Do you know what? Now I look into it, it is just the two in Europe, I think. Doesn't matter anyway. Let's talk a bit more about what I'm actually building here. Yeah, so that's pretty much the whole layout built now, just giving it a test run. They're just blocking it off there with some fencing as well. so what I tried to do is put a little bit of water in but then I didn't really feel that that worked so much for this one I've done that on a couple of the other coasters in the park and it, it works alright but decided against that for this one in the end just put a little staff path here to sort of get them to the backstage area underneath the lift hill And yeah, people, people always say, you know, I should do more backstage stuff for the realism. The main reason I don't do it that much is because I don't really like building it, to be honest. I prefer doing all the scenery and the buildings and stuff. But I suppose if it was a real park, then you'd need all these bits in there. So it is something I'm going to try and do more of going forward. And you'll even see that a bit in this build once I've done the station. So station building here, very simple. Started off with just a rectangle box, basically. Um, and then I built it up and up from there, added more to it because it looked a bit dull to start with. But with this type of ride, this is the sort of station that you'll see on them usually. It's quite simple. The focus is a lot more on the coaster itself rather than the scenery or the station and all that sort of thing. I think at this point I'd even taken construction anarchy off so that I could just place things a lot quicker. 
you know, it just goes, it snaps straight to the right height rather than having to mess about with it. Yeah, like you can see that's a lot quicker placing them pillars down. See, I've just got the train paused just there so that I can see the clearance needed for the for the sort of doorway that takes it in and out of the station. Yeah, I've always loved these curved roof pieces, especially for a sort of more modern looking station. I think they work really well just with some, some other basic sort of slanted roofs over side of them. At this point, I was a little bit stuck with ideas what to do with it, so I just started placing random stuff down, seeing how it looked. It's actually a little bit like the Celeste Mountain DLC campaign that I did, where I built in a sort of similar style, carrying on from the style that was already there at the start of the scenario. But after a while of playing about, I've got something that looks quite good. And I mean, in terms of theming, it doesn't really fit in with the Dutch area that much. I guess it's just more that sort of industrial feel. But often with these hypercoasters, like I say, the focus is on the rides. They don't go that heavy on the theming of it. Um, even like you look at Shambhala, the station's themed, but that's pretty much it. Once you're on the ride, it is just the coaster itself although that whole area in Port Ventura is quite well themed the sort of oriental sort of feel to it and then I thought everything looks better with water I've probably put way too much water in this park already but it just really helps add to the look Finishing off the fences and stuff, not really a lot to say about this to be honest. I put some extra sort of props in and stuff in a bit. Like you can see here I build a little tower and then I stick one of the, I think it's like a support tower, sort of inside it. Again just to get that industrial look. And change the colours a bit to mix it up a bit. See a turret on the top there, like the spotlight turret. I do think there's some props from the original, like vanilla game, that are so underrated in this as well that you don't see that used that much in parks. That I really want to try and use more of because I do use a lot of mods for these builds. I'm actually looking forward to at some point maybe going back to some of the original campaigns and playing a, playing about with the game a bit more in vanilla. So I've, I've completed them all before, well most of them, up till like the last five when I first got the game a year ago. But obviously back then my building style wasn't that great, I was just copying what what you get with the campaign when you start it normally. So I want to try and take it to the next level now. But I also want to do another big sandbox park. I've got something in mind for when this project's over. Obviously, 
in terms of the lockdown at the moment. They're easing measures in the UK. We're going to be back at work soon, so I won't have as much time as I have to play this. Like, there's been some weeks where I played every single day, and I'm just not going to have that sort of time soon. So I'm glad that we've nearly got this project complete. And I'm actually like really happy with how it's turned out. It probably is the best project I've done in this game. So yeah, just retexturing the paths and stuff to match the other ones. What are we doing here? Putting some lamps in. All pretty basic theming. Yeah, and then I decided that the water tower was just too big to stick in there, didn't go with everything else. If you've seen that episode where I build a sort of barren type coaster, well, when I do the theming for it in the episode after, you'll see that I actually recreated the water tower, but more to the size I wanted it, just using art shapes and pillars and stuff. So I'm adding the catwalks there to the brake run. Just from the simple catwalks mod. And then what I wanted there was a separate sort of platform, which you'll see me add in a minute to the corner. structure there for the catwalks. And just sticking a small roof over it to keep people dry if it rains. Yeah, here's what I was on about, about the uh, about the platform sort of thing. I'll put in there. And again, just giving a bit of colour variation. Sorry if you can hear that traffic noise outside, we do live right next to a main road here. Can't do a lot about that to be honest, I've not got the best microphone, it doesn't really block out things like that. Don't know if you can hear it or not while I'm recording, but you know I'll have the game music on in the background as well in the final video. So this is the backstage area that I added, again just to give it a bit more realism, um, it's fairly basic to be honest, I just put a few crates in, a few of the props and that, and stuck a little sort of fake staff building in there. And these shipping containers as well, they're quite handy, I think they're from the cyberpunk land set what's up on the workshop get some uh, some really cool little pieces in there like like the crane that you can see that i put in just in front of the station in a way i think this is a, a kind of a similar theme to what i did for the baron type coaster the dive coaster but I've tried to vary it a bit. Because I mean, in a way that was almost 
It's, I mean, the, the ride in real life is almost sort of steampunk theming, but more industrial, if you know what I mean. But it's a very popular style to copy in these sort of games, and I think it does look really good. So onto the supports then, custom supports. I didn't do it for the whole ride, but I just think it needed it. So the main lift hill section and the sort of the little airtime hills at the end of the ride as well there. I tried these ones and I thought they're not steep enough, so I do change that and put in steeper ones in a minute. Yeah, that looks a bit ridiculous. Yeah, so I mean, to be honest, adding custom supports is probably one of my least favourite things to do in the game. But for a big build like this, I like to try and do it sometimes when I feel it's more necessary to get this looking a bit more like the type of coaster it would really be. I remember doing it, if you, if you saw my Woodland Peak videos, or the UK film, theme park I built. I did it for the B&M invert on that. And it's, I swear it took me a whole afternoon just to put the supports in. Um, yeah, not my favourite thing to build, but it did look a lot better afterwards. Honestly, with these ones, it didn't take me too long, and now I'm looking back, I've just realised I've missed the footers off, and the little, is it f flanges? So yeah, I'll go back and do that, there's, there's quite a lot of finishing touches that still need to go into the part, but I'll talk about that at the end of the video. Because we are getting very near to the end of the series now. I just changed the track here, because... It was interfering, it was, the support was going through it, so I've just raised the track a bit there so that, that doesn't happen. And then I really had to try and get that into another tiny little pop of air time before the brake run. If it just stayed high and went down slowly it just wouldn't look right. So yeah, here you're literally just seeing all the supports going in. And although I tried to get them all sort of the right distance apart, I don't think it's perfect, but it's good enough. like this bit the way the top of the hill doesn't have a support on it is either side I think that looks really good on a B&M coaster and again here's another typical thing that these coasters will have just so I don't know what you'd call it it's just a bar that goes down a few feet lower than the actual lift hill just to support it And it makes it, I actually added this to the flawless coaster that I put in as well in the Italy area. But I did it off camera. Because it, I made a diagonal lift hill. But I realised there is a sort of diagonal cornice piece that goes at the right. Right or border or whatever it was. So that went in in the end. Then just added these little pillars to support the bar. And there we have it, a realistic B&M Hyper, or the best I could build. Like I say, I'm not the best at building this type of ride. To be honest, in the game I'm much better with scenery than I am actually building coasters. There's, uh, there'll be people out there that can build far better coasters than I can. And then the last major thing I build here is just the shed. <laughs> okay, I don't know what the technical name for that is, but you know what it is. 
It's got the transfer track where it goes into a shed they park the trains that aren't in use. Obviously there's no actual functioning transfer track in the game. Same with Planet Coaster. Um, but you can just make one and make it look alright. You know, and you just sort of use your imagination that it's a functioning transfer track. Also now there's a mod called PTE, I think it's called, or CTE or something, it's literally track pieces that are scenery items so you don't have to put another actual ride in there which are very handy placing all the trees down then this is pretty much the last thing I do here for this build Especially like using whatever it's called, the blobby tree there, the tall one. <laughs> Recolouring it red, I think it looks quite good. Or well, not red, but you know, a dark sort of brownie red. Maroon, is that the word? Yeah, I'm quite I'm pretty happy with how the foliage looks on this. And just recolouring some of the landscape. Obviously, like this is built on a flat bit of land at the front of the park. It shows off the coaster to everyone, you know, coming up to the car park. They look, they see this big hyper coaster. And that is pretty much, I think it's Silver Star that Europa does that. So Silver, Silver Star or Hyperion do that same thing where you basically you see it from outside the park bit of a car park coaster if you like so here's a completed build then for today the station area in the end I'm actually really happy with how it looks nowhere near as complex as some of the things I've built in this park but I think for a hyper coaster it's perfect Then obviously there's the stats and we'll take a ride on it. Sort of a POV if you like, but it's not a POV. Just sped it up a bit up the lift hill because I got bored watching. Yeah, into the first drop. Yeah, this turnaround section here is typical on a lot of these as well. Shambhala's got one. Actually, one of my favourite bits of the ride, that is. And as you can see, we're getting a little bit of lag now. Um, FPS is still around 30, which isn't bad considering how many pieces I've used in this park. I mean, thousands. Um, but you've, considering we're pretty much at the end of the project now, the computer's still handling it, handling it alright. I mean, I am on my laptop with this. And it's only an i5. I've upgraded the RAM and stuff, so it's it, it's been running the park okay. And that's pretty much it then. There'll be two more episodes for this part. I'm going to do a bit of work off camera, just some finishing touches. Uh, the next video you see will be building the hotel. I probably won't do commentary for that one because there'll be no need to. It'll be probably a hotel similar to the one at Fantasia Land, big themed hotel. So I'm quite looking forward to building that. And then that'll be it, park tour for the final video where I'll talk you through everything that we've built over the last five weeks, which I'm really looking forward to do. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.